the quest. I just tried what I already had. I tried it a bunch of different ways, even if it didn't make the most sense, you know, with the way that I think about combining combinations. Hi everyone, Fo here. So I want to discuss how I come up with combinations for my wash and goes. Before we go any further into the quest and you see me actually styling my hair. So let's dive right into it. So a little bit of background. So I started learning to do wash and goes from curl artist in 2019, but I started to find, realize that I had sense sensitivity and sensitive skin. So I had to deviate from a lot of the recommended products. So I had to figure out on my own how to use products that at the time weren't irritating for me. And so I started out being able to use some fragranced products. And so I started out with a combination that I came up with after some weeks of a leave-in conditioner. So this is the first recipe, I guess, that I'm telling you all. I would use a leave-in conditioner that had like a serum-like texture. And that was the As I Am leave-in conditioner. Then I would go in with the Curly Magic Styling Gel or a Curl Stimulator. So it's like a curl activator, but a botanical kind. And then I would go in with the Dew Mousse Def as a final layer. And so that is a combination that I used to do on my hair. And so it wouldn't have enough hold for me now, even if I could use it. So now I can only use fragrance-free products or unscented products. But back then, when my hair was shorter, it had just enough hold, at least for the very top portion of my hair. So that was one of my starter combos where I really started to understand how products can work together. And so what I learned from that combination, well, let's back up. How did I even start to put that combination together in the first place? Trial and error. <laughs> so I have a very intimate relationship with trial and error now. But I started off with playing around with the Dew Mousse Def Foam. Because all I needed was three to five days out of my wash and go because I wash my hair quite often due to my sensitive skin. So I was like, I should be able to just use a foam for my wash and goes, right? So I started experimenting with the Dew Mousse Def Foam. And so when I was experimenting with the Dew Mousse Def Foam, I noticed that it gave me beautiful wash and go results. This was years ago. I noticed that it gave me beautiful wash and go results, but they didn't last more than more than a day. So I was like, okay, I like the way the foam activates my curls, but it has no longevity. So I thought to myself, why don't I add a gel? And so I added Curly Magic because at the time, off and on, it wasn't irritating me. And I couldn't use I Create Hold, a popular gel from Innersense that a lot of stylists recommend because that was irritating me. So I added Curly Magic to the Dew Mousse Def. And what I learned from trying to put those two things together is that they work better for me on damp hair. Trying to put a foam and a um, botanical gel together. If I try to put it on wet hair, it oftentimes slides off or it doesn't adhere well. And that may not always be the case, but that's something that I learned from trying to put those two products together. Something else that I learned from trying to put a foam and a botanical gel together like Curly Magic, because not all botanical gels are the same, but a more juicy, gummy botanical gel. What I also learned is that sometimes botanical gel combinations drag on my hair and they, they don't have good slip and I don't like that. So what I did back in the day, and I have a video of it that you all can watch, a very comprehensive, comprehensive video providing products from wash day to the very end and i'll link that in the description what i did was i added a leave-in conditioner while i was in the shower on soaking wet hair and the leave-in conditioner that i chose had a serum like texture so it was less likely to interfere with my styling products that i chose as opposed to a creamier leave-in that could interfere so then that recipe for me basically became leave-in conditioner Curly Magic and um, a styling foam, the Dew styling foam. And I put the foam on the outside because it had the strongest hold out of everything I was using. And so that was the combination that started me out in learning how to put things together. Now, when I look back at that kind of combination, it doesn't make the most sense for me, 
because the Curly Magic doesn't have a whole lot of hold. And so um, combining that with the leave-in conditioner, it was too much. Eventually my hair was just over moisturized. It was very gummy. But at the time that got me through some hard times and my hair looked gorgeous while I could use it before it began to be a little too moisture rich on my hair. So yeah, I that was the that time of figuring out that first combination was very pivotal for me. So now I think about all kinds of wash and co wash and go recipes. Like I know a wash, wash and go recipe that I could have done with me only being able to use fragrance free products would be the Vanny Cream Gel. So this is a classic gel. I'm gonna call it classic as opposed to plastic because I think that that is offensive to some people. When you call the more um, classic gels like Wetline, Eco, plastic gels, but these this category of gel is a gel that has a higher amount of like a VP, VA, copolymer or PVP, and it doesn't have a whole bunch of like botanical humectants so ingredients to help attract and hold water in the hair it doesn't have a whole bunch of that in there as well it's just more of a gel that focuses on hold um, might have some humectants in it but it's more focused on hold with the higher amount of those classic gelling ingredients so i know as a person that can only use fragrance free products i know that a possible combination would be the vanny cream gel and a creamy leave-in or something to go underneath it. And with the more classic combination of a cream and a classic gel or a leave-in and a classic gel, I've seen a lot of people throughout YouTube have a lot of success with those sort of combinations. And some people don't have as much success, they find them to be drying. And also there are some professionals that don't approve of people using the more classic gels. Quite often they find that they're more drying and or they're more buildup prone. And also there are some professionals that don't have a problem with the more classic gel. Here I'm discussing comboing the Eco Slay Banana Cream Leave-In with the Vanny Cream Hair Gel. And so I also did get the opportunity to mix the, and I'm gonna put a picture of what I'm talking about right here. I did get an opportunity to mix the two together and see if they blended. And they did blend in my hand, so they might be a good combo for somebody out there that enjoys classic gels for their wash and go, along with a cream um, that has humectants, emollients, and all the things to help nourish their hair. But the reason why I didn't go for that combination of the Eco Slay banana cream leave-in with this fanny cream gel is because of how often I need to wash my hair. I also would need to be careful using such a rich cream on a rich on a weekly basis. I've noticed creamier leave-ins. I start to experience some scalp irritation, um, kind of a sour smelling scalp, and I have to watch out for scalp acne. So I would be able to use the banana cream if I would if it matched my routine, but I would have to stagger it, use it one week and not use it the next week to make sure I don't overdo it with emollients coming in contact or richer things coming in contact with my scalp and it being left in my hair as opposed to being rinsed out um like a shampoo or a conditioner but yeah i have to wash my hair every three to five days and i found that combinations that have richer creams and more classic gels don't rinse away as easy as i need them to for how often i'm washing my hair so that's a possible wash and go recipe for my unscented and fragrance free people out there. But then also if you're somebody that's just looking to style your hair, a possible wash and go recipe for you could be a creamy leave-in or a cream that you find softening, moisturizing to your hair and then topping it with a classic gel. Maybe that's not vanity cream for you. Maybe that's eco styler for you. Maybe that's wet line for you. And a professional reference for somebody that uses wet line with leave-in conditioners is April of Wash To Go on Instagram, and she is in Jamaica. I've noticed a lot of people in more of the tropical climates, they seem to have some great results with more of your classic gels. Um, I think that sometimes if you stay in a more moderate climate like I do, you might experience classic gels as being more drying. And then I think it also depends on the person's hair. 
I didn't have a, as great of a relationship with the classic gels because of the way my hair interacts with water, the way my hair interacts with the environment. Another combination that I know some people love is a botanical base gel or a gooey gummy gel. Curly Magic is an example. There are also some, also some gooey gummy, but like mm, somewhat botanical, not the most botanical gels that are more so like custards. Like some people might like the Mayel, pomegranate and honey custard. So gooey gummy custards or gels, and then putting a stronger hold gel on top that is more like a classic gel, like a wet line, like a eco or like the Vanny cream. So that is another possible combination that some people love. And I'm not too sure if you would apply that on wet or damp hair. So there's that one. So another possible combination that I thought of trying as a fragrance free girly um, is this with a spray leave-in like the Anasi spray leave-in. And I just thought of this combination it's the Anasi Fragrance Free Spray Leave-In. I just thought of this combination, but I'm on the tail end of my Emba Naturals. Well, it's gone now, basically. And I don't feel like, <laughs> I don't feel like right now, re-upping on this and then purchasing the whole new bottle of the Anasi Spray Leave-In just to see if they go together right now. I may do it in the future, but that's another possible combo for my folks out there. So this is a, well, I say it's a stronger hold botanical gel. Some people may not experience it that way, but this is a stronger hold botanical gel. And what makes it botanical is it has a lot of ingredients like sea kelp, green tea leaf, aloe vera powder. And you know, it's gelling, the gelling agents are things like xanthan gum, as opposed to more of your classic gelling, in, gelling ingredients like PVP, VP, copolymer, those sort of things. And so this is more of the botanical category, even though some botanical gels do have classic gelling in ingredients, they just have a ton of humectants as well. And so this is more of a, a botanical gel. And so I thought about now a possible combination of pairing this with the spray leaving. The way I would do it because of the nature of these products is I would probably spray the Anasi spray leaving on soaking wet hair in the shower. And then I would try to get my first layer of the Emba Naturals gel on all my hair in the shower. So I always start from two strand twists that have been freshly conditioned and detangle. So I would rinse the conditioner out of a twist and then I would likely spray the Anasi leave-in and then I'll put this down and then I would twist the section up and then move to the next section, rinse the conditioner out and continue the process. And when I step out of the shower with this styling combination, I would go ahead and I would rake and smooth in smaller sections. And if need be, I would add a little bit more of the Emba Natural Styling Gel for more slip and more hold. That would be the plan uh, for me to use those two products together. And it would be my hope that the Anasi Spray Leave-In wouldn't be an issue for my scalp or those other people or anybody else out there that has a sensitive scalp because it doesn't contain any like heavier ingredients and it's also a spray. So I look forward to possibly using that combination in the future. And the reason why the application would be different with the botanical gel is because I've noticed botanical gels adhere to my hair better when there's plenty of water involved. And I'm not using a styling foam, just largely botanical gels. They do better with more water. And I see spray and believe in. So, but the combinations that I've been using for the longest stint of time still are very similar to that initial combination, first combination that I learned how to do. That was different from what curl artists are doing, which is applying a foam and gel on damp hair. So oftentimes when I style my hair, it's going to be a foam down first because I've noticed foams can create ease of application for me. And then it's going to be two botanical gels oftentimes on top where I'll put a, so it'll be a foam, then I'll put a, and I'm not naming products right now because unfortunately my favorite foam and two gel combination is not on the market yet. The company sent me samples 
and I'm waiting for them to release the products to the public. But I put down a foam first that's not drying to my hair. That's very important. And then I would put down two botanical gels. One botanical gel would be jam-packed full of juicy humectants. It's going to be similar to Curly Magic Curl Stimulator. Have very little hold and be gummy, gooey, and just juicy with humectants like aloe vera, like okra, like marshmallow root. And then I will go on top with another botanical gel that has a stronger hold for my hair that's similar to the Ember Naturals Styling Gel. So that's the type of combination that I've been doing as of late for the most part. And I removed the leave-in conditioner from um, the foam and two botanical gel combination because I got to a point where I didn't need it. Like I told you all, I've experienced in the past using a leave-in conditioner and my hair beginning to get gummy. But if I ever need a leave-in conditioner, then I will reach for one. And before I arrived at the styling combination I have now, when it came to fragrance-free products, I used to use a fragrance-free spray leave-in from Briogeo and then use a styling foam and a botanical gel. And the Briogeo spray would dilute my hold and it didn't have any additional moisture. So that's why I started experimenting with foam as a base. I was initially nervous to do that because I thought it would be too drying. And it can be sometimes and sometimes it's not. But the fragrance-free spray leave-ins that I'm aware of, that has improved. And the ones that have come out, they've improved. And also the botanical gels have improved. So now I have more options with my combinations. And I want to make sure to reemphasize the reason why I use the foam as a base. is because foams create ease of application for me. I've experienced so many botanical gels in the fragranced and the fragrance-free world that are hard to apply to my hair and they drag. And that is frightening and I know that I'm shredding and tearing up my hair if I'm trying to force a botanical gel through my hair. No matter how much warm water I use, some botanical gels just do not apply to my hair profile easily. So there's that. I, I don't have any hard rules um besides what i told you all earlier like i i something being drying is unacceptable something being hard to apply is unacceptable something being irritated is irritating is unacceptable besides that i don't have any hard rules when it comes to ingredients and things like that and combos but um yeah and let me say this so if i'm doing a foam and two botanical gels once again it's typically on more damp hair so i would i would step out of the shower and immediately as soon as possible because i don't want too much hydration to escape my hair i would begin to spritz a section in warm water and then i would go ahead and go in with the foam down first and i would go in with the gooey gummy curl stimulator type botanical gel and then i would go in with this with the botanical gel that has a little bit of a stronger hold and has a little bit more humidity resistance on top to coat everything in and I would rake and smooth and style that section and quickly move to all the rest of the sections and it's important for whatever combination I use when I'm doing damp styling to be a combination that has very much so ease of application because I need to move quickly with damp styling so the hydration does too much hydration doesn't escape my hair I will do styling with two botanical gels in the shower so a combination that is popular among a lot of people that do a similar style of hair care to me is they do two botanical gels they do one gel they call a base gel and they do another gel called a topper gel and the base gel has that gooey gummy thing going on similar to curly magic or it is curly magic and then they go on top with a stronger hold gel like an i create hold and i create hold is actually a hybrid to me i call it a hybrid because it contains ingredients that are reminiscent of this type of a botanical gel, like an aloe vera and things like that. But then it also contains more traditional or classic gelling ingredients. But a lot of people, they go in with like an, like an Uncle Funky's Daughter type gel as a base. And then they put their eye crate hold on top. And the base, the gooey gummy gel provides some curl activation, some um, helps with hydration and holding water. And then the eye crate hold on top can uh, create that final layer to help with humidity resistance and things like that. And they like to apply those gels on soaking wet hair. 
And I, I might have some older videos where you can see me doing a similar process. And if so, I will link that down below. Um, some people will do that sort of process. And I know how to do that similar type of process when styling on Silky Wet Hair. And I put an example in the description box below. It's not my favorite process. Um, styling with botanical gels on soaking wet hair. It's not my favorite. Um, I always feel a little bit anxious with using botanical gels because a lot of them cause my hair to tighten and tangle. I do it. I know how to do the base and the topper. And when it comes to botanical gels, and I have some examples of bases and toppers in my Amazon store, possible examples. And I also have um, some videos showing me do the base and topper approach. Also, when it comes to any combination that I use, I listen to my intuition. I listen to my intuition. If if I get done with a combination, a styling combination, and I dry my hair, and the roots feel extra crispy dry, like the roots where the casts may have already broken from the gels feels extra crispy dry, then that combination is too dry for me. I'm okay with having a gel cast, a bit of a crunch from, cause gel creates a crunch for it to, a lot of gels, not all gels to help with hold. So I understand that and I'm fine with that. But if something, if, if the crunch from the gel goes away, dissolves away or breaks away, cause that's what gel cast does. And my hair still feels extra crispy and wiry. Then that combination is not for me, right? So I'm not somebody that has to have beautiful styling by all means, has to use what's recommended by all means. I can't use what's recommended <laughs> oftentimes. And so I encourage people when they're coming up with their wash and go combinations to trust their, trust their intuition. And then also, um, yeah, trust their intuition, but try not to give into like stereotypes. You know, like I'm not, I'm saying like, if, if your hair is cotton-like, then, well, let me speak for myself. My hair can feel cotton-like. So I wouldn't want my gels and my stylers to take me too much away from that once the gel cast breaks. But I don't touch my hair and expect it to feel like silk because that's not my hair. So that's how I think about that. So um, it's taken me quite a bit of time to figure out different types of combinations, different ways to apply them. And sometimes I deviate from that. And you're going to see that I'm just I, with the quest. I just tried what I already had. I tried it a bunch of different ways, even if it didn't make the most sense, you know, with the way that I think about combining combinations. I tried it just to see what would happen. And I learned a lot. And I'm so excited to share that with you all. But I and I also wanted to give you all some context as to how I've already learned how to put together wash and go combinations. And I hope some of these ideas for wash and go combinations will help you as you put together your own wash and go combinations. So please leave any questions that you have down below. Once again, my name is Fo. Please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Bye-bye.